Hey guys and welcome to this video and myself and Michael today are going to be giving you our synopsis of a Legion tier list for the Chaos Space Marines, okay? So we're going to be taking a look at each and every single Legion, but we're going to do this tier list with a little bit of difference, Michael, aren't we? We are indeed. We have these fancy number sticks yep. and what we're going to do is um, we've got a few classifications, which we'll go through in a sec, and we're going to number them each. We'll give our own sort of number or how strong it might be or how good they might be at that particular thing. And then we'll do a total and we'll do an average. And then at the end, we'll have a look and compare all of the eight uh, legions. So we don't actually know who's going to come out in top yet. As, as recording this, it's not preset. We're going to be looking at four different categories. Category number one is the legion rules. We're going to give that a mark out of five. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give a mark out of five. Michael's going to give a mark out of five. Then what we're going to do is take a look at the stratagems. Yep. So the stratagems that you can use in game, we're going to give those a score out of five. We're then going to take a look at Warlord Traits and Relics as a combined score. Okay, we're grouping those together because they're kind of the same thing. Uh, again, out of five. And then finally, the last category is going to be the army's ability to play the mission and secondaries. Yes. Okay, so each and every category can be up to 10 points, mm -hmm. your score added to mine. Yep. Then we're gonna add all those together. We'll have a total, and then we're gonna give each and every single one an average out of five, okay? Cool. And therefore, by the end of this video, we're gonna find out which Legion comes out in top. Now, obviously we're not including like the law or you know the kind of maybe play style of the army or what it looks like. We're not looking at that. No. We told you the four categories. So without any further ado, let's go and rank these armies, Michael. So where are we starting? Well, we're going to start with the Black Legion. We're just going to do them in order uh, as they are in the Codex. And we'll find out at the end which one comes out on top. Yep. Black Legion. Right, do you want to give us a synopsis on their Legion trait? Okay, so the two bullet points you're going to get. Number one is going to be that you are going to ignore combat attrition. Cool. That's fine. Bullet point number two. You get plus one to hit when targeting the closest eligible unit or if you make a charge. Okay. So you can get plus one to shooting, shooting something close, or punching stuff in combat after you've made a charge. Plus one to hit, pretty good. Pretty good, yeah, and that affects anything with the Black Legion keyword. Yeah. Well, their trait seems pretty amazing, but what do, what do we think about it? We're gonna rank it out of five now. Let's do that. Three, two, one. Interesting. Okay. So I've gone for a four, you've gone for a three. Steve, why three? Why three? Well, combat attrition rarely comes up in the game. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of like a muted point. Yep. Often the plus one to hit is good from shooting, but not everything you want to shoot is always the closest eligible unit. And it's easy for your opponent to play around. Yep. Either putting out chaff units in front or charging you instead. Yep. That's why, giving it yep. a three. Fantastic justification. Well then, let's have a look at their stratagems. Okay, so the stratagems that they have, they've got one fantastic one that I love have an extra Warlord trait on your Warlord, that's awesome. Um, now, some of the stratagems are pretty good, they're really strong, you can yeah. change OBSEC around, and I'd say overall they're real tactical play stratagems. Yeah, But they are quite expensive. They are quite expensive. So, what are we thinking, Steve? Ooh, we're in agreement here. Okay, again, is it because how expensive they are? I think so. Um, and you add that into the fact that a couple of them are sort of once per game. So the Warlord yep. trait thing you only ever use really once. And then there's another one to use a different trait. Um, again, that's once per battle. Yep. So Exactly. Yeah. Warlord traits and relics for the Black Legion. Okay, so once again, I would say they're very tactical. Lots yep. of manipulation of either CP regeneration. They've got one which is allows you to have objectives secured. Mm -hmm. Fall back and shoot, fall back and charge, that kind of stuff. Black Legion is the tactical element, I would say. Yeah. But they are... Pretty good on the whole. Yes. Is my opinion. Let's give them rank out five. So Michael, why have you given it a five? Well, I really like some of these Wall of Traits and Relics. Um, I think the uh, getting CP back, really good in this yep. day and age. Uh, I really like the Relic that gives out Obsec in an aura. Cloak of Conquest. The cloak of Conquest. Yeah. Um, very rare in this book, in yep. my opinion. Um, so I just really, really rate um, their relics and stuff, and there's a teleporting relic as well. That's really um, good. I just think they're, they're fantastic. Yeah, I would agree with that. 
So Michael, what do we think when it comes to their ability to play the mission and some of the secondaries, what do we think? Well, their main secondary uh, is sort of doing an action on objectives with infantry units uh, or bikers, um, and then of course their secondary is the same rest of it. We do have ways to get objectives secured and manipulate that yeah. with the army, um, but otherwise it's sort of similar to just your basic marines. I would agree, so, so ready? Three, mm -hmm. two, one. Okay, you're a little bit lower than me. Yeah, um, I personally don't really rate some of the Chaos Space Marine secondaries. Yeah. Um, I also think this one, um, because it's a shadow operation, the Black Legion one, yeah. you're probably more likely to take something like banners. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, sadly, it doesn't quite come into it. Um, I think the obsec is nice, but they do seem quite slow. Yeah. Uh, they've got a lot of emphasis on legionaries and, and terminators are bad and that kind of thing. I would agree. Uh, the reason why I gave it a four is because of the objective secured manipulation. Yeah. Uh, the ability, I think you're going to overwhelm the primary. Mm -hmm. I and mean, I think that's really well this army is going to shine. Yeah. Uh, so having, you know, keeping your banners up is going to be great with objective secured, yeah, especially cool. with the warlord trait and such like. Um, so yeah, that's what I've given it a four is the overwhelming mission play. Fair enough. So the scores are in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you at the very, very end what that's going to be and how they're going to rank to everybody else. So, Michael, what legion is next? Next, we have the word bearers, the sons of Lorgar. Sons of Lorgar. So, we'll start with their trait. Yeah. Are you familiar with their trait, Steve? I am familiar with their trait. Do you want to tell us about it? Okay, so their trait is going to be that they get a 5 plus feel no pain or shrug, however you want to say it, against mortal wounds. Okay, strong. Pretty good in this day and age. There's lots of mortal wounds. And their second trait as they get re-roll the hit roll when they're in combat. Right, and this is if they charge, were charged, or heroically, or heroically intervened. And let's be honest, they're going to be in one phase. Yeah. The fights aren't going to go much longer than that. Cool. So pretty much re-roll hits. The reason why that's great, I'll come on to later. So right. Michael, what we're we giving that out well. of? Three, two, one. Oh! That's a 10, that's a full 10. That's a full 10. Um, I mean, it's insane. It's so good. Because the army-wide sort of rule there will work for units that don't get re-rolls typically from support characters that don't have the core keyword, yeah. like your possessed, your warp talons, all those nastiness. Even your demon engines, like this is wow. nuts. It's crazy good. So Michael, what's next? Right, well next we've got to look at their stratagems. Stratagems. Um, these are, there's quite a bit of damage Stratagems in there, but also some nice tricks for your characters. Yeah. So there's one that might make your priest better, yeah. or maybe affect your psychic powers, or save some damage rolls. Okay. What are we thinking for this one? Stratagems. I'm going in with three, two, one. Oh, evens again, Michael, on the same page. Okay. Lit so literally on the same page. On the yep. Yeah. So what do you think about their stratagem, Steve? So for me, I love the reroll wound stratagem. I think that's great in Chaos Space Marines because they really struggle against some of those bigger, tougher targets yeah. like knights and stuff. So having reroll wounds as yeah. a stratagem is brilliant. Also, I love the ability to be able to just to like auto pass those psychic powers when you yeah. failed them. Crazy. Really great utility. So that's why I've given them a four. Yep. Yeah, totally agree with that. Fantastic stratagems. Let's move on to their warlord traits and relics. Okay. Now, this is where it gets quite spicy in my opinion. They've got one absolute standout. Um, I'll go on to that in a moment, but they've got some okay weapons, but typically some of these ones really for me, uh, you've got one that affects word bearer psychers mm -hmm. to buff those up. So really you've got some nice synergistic ones which work really well, those demonkin kind of units. And also obviously then you've got the ones that buff the psychers. Cool, well, let's give this a ranking out of five. Oh. oh, he's gone for the big five. Gone for the big five, though. I've gone for a four. Okay. Now, their warlord traits are fantastic. Yeah. But they haven't blown me out of the park. Okay. You know, there's some ways to buff um, Demonkin, etc. Their relics, I think, really, we may, maybe there's just two good ones, like auto take ones. But um, I think they're so good they that are. you're. Because obviously, we're only going to take so many warlord traits and relics yes. anyway. And I think mm -hmm. the ones you're going to take, you're absolutely taking this. Yep. It's not even a question. You're definitely taking it. Yep. You can have one where you know an additional power and you get plus one to the manifest your powers. Yes. Brilliant. Especially when you combine that with the Mark of Zinch. Yeah. Really good. Then what you can also do is take the Belfort icon. Now, this icon in particular is unbelievably strong. Mm. What it allows you to do is essentially 
all your units, infantry, not even core locked, within six of this character, you, Michael, cannot re-roll your hit roll, your damage roll, or your wound roll against me when you're in combat. So it's crazy good, and I think it's an auto-take. So that's why I've given yeah. it a five. For me, uh, it didn't quite get the top spot because there's a lot of stuff based around priests yeah. and um, psychers, and they're usually only buff core units. And actually, this I think this Legion really wants to lean into demon kin and stuff. It really so does. it seems like there's that little bit of a disconnection, uh, disconnection there. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, what about their mission play? So it's mission play. They've got a fantastic secondary, Exalted of the Dark Gods. It's a psychic secondary, Shadow Operations. It is a Shadow Operation, yeah. Doing an action in the centre of the board. Which stacks really, really well with a psychic action that you can do in the centre of the table as yeah. well. So I think there's some really nice synergies there between the two. Um, so I think with the overwhelming ability on the psychic front to mm -hmm. manifest those psychic powers, I think their secondary game is rather strong, combining with this Shadow Operation one as well, which requires you to be centre of the table. Well, let's put a number on it, Steve. We're in agreement. Yeah. yeah, it's a great secondary, um, and they sort of do um, the rest of their secondaries reasonably well. Lots yeah. of combat and that kind of thing going on, and of course, it helps with the psychic. There's lots of psychic buffs for psychic actions, um, especially the undeniable one. Yeah, cool. So we've got the scores there, and we'll come to those at the end. But good round, I think, for the word bearers. Right, Michael, the Night Lords are up next. I'm gonna let you talk about these. All not, right. Not too long though, yeah? Come no, on. it's all good. So what's their Legion trait? So their Legion trait, a bit complicated, but the first one is an aura of minus two to the leadership of enemy units. Okay. And minus one to their combat attrition tests. Yeah. Okay. All right. The second half is if they've got a leadership of five or less, if, assuming it's been modified, then they get plus one to wound in melee. Is she like a worse blood angel? It's basically kind of like a worse blood angel, but there's potential morale effects. Be a blood angel, don't you? So, uh, Michael. Yeah, well, they've got a lot of history, but we won't go there. Let's give this uh, a ranking, shall we? Mm, a bit low, but I think, uh, I think we can probably agree. Yeah. Modifying leadership affects maybe half the games you play, probably less, um, and the plus one to wound in combat is just better. Uh, I should say they also get plus one to wound against half strength units as well, but most of the game involves full strength units. Or which then die. You only want plus one to wound against them, like a knight. You which can't half can strength. Never be at half strength. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, sadly, that's their trait. Cool. Now let's go over to their stratagems. Stratagems. Now these are quite tricksy. We've got a fall back and charge. That's good. We've got a you cannot fall back from me in combat. Very good. Very strong. We've got a turn off aura abilities, um, and then there's tactical ones like deep striking turn one. Um, or okay. going back into reserve. Sound pretty good. So, yeah, decent. Let's give them a score. Cool. So in tune, Michael. We are, aren't we? Oh. So, a four, they're, they're, they're good stratagems. The majority, um, they're also one CP. I could see myself of using them. them, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That locking combat. Yeah. Extremely powerful. Fall back in charge. Back what you charge. don't want to get, you know, is like a unit of five possessed that haven't quite killed their opponent mm -hmm. and you're, they're locked in combat or, yeah. you know, somebody jumps in with a rhino or something, you're like, I couldn't quite kill it and I'm stuck in with it. So. Yeah, and mobility is quite hard with the army, so being able to jump back in the sky or deep strike turn one is very useful. Yeah, I think they're really useful. Okay, Wall of Traits and Relics then. Wall of Traits and Relics. Um, there's a few bangers in here. Um, there's a Wall of Trait where you can consolidate in any direction, even if you're in base contact is wild. Um, there's another one where you make someone fight last. Okay. Or maybe you turn off Hobsec within six inches. Yeah. Relics wise, um, there's a quite a few good ones in here, um, increasing your AP and reducing your enemy number of attacks, or maybe some armor, uh, two plus save, um, or perhaps uh, boosting your weapons in combat. That's pretty good. So let's okay. give them a ranking. Or... Yeah. Well, I think we'll go with you on this one. Probably you, you know the strength of them a little bit better than I do. Nothing mm. just really kind of like wowing me. Yeah. And I can totally understand that. Um, and from experience, if I'm honest, the relics aren't huge. Okay. Um, you could maybe sprinkle one in there, but you're probably looking at the main codex relics. But what for me does it is how strong their warlord traits are. Okay. I would probably take all six 
if I could. Okay, cool. Um, you know, turning off Obsec within a six inch aura. That's really strong. Huge when you yeah. don't have a lot of it yourself. A fight last, very rare in the book. Yeah. And there's one here where you can turn a single advance hit, wound, or save throw to become a six. Yes. Once okay. per yeah. turn. There's, I think they're fantastic um, warlord traits, but the relics do leave a bit to be desired. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, cool. Right, so then, Michael, finally, how does it play the mission? Right, well, um, mission-wise, we've kind of talked about strats, but they're sort of in their own thing, and we've ranked that already. Mission-wise, they're, they're kind of like most others. Um, their secondary is based on morale, so points for uh, morale checks, falling back, um, failing actions, or if you kill a unit and roll above its leadership in melee, um, that's their secondary, um, but it also conflicts with probably one of the most common ones you'll take for Space Marine, Chaos Space Marines anyway. Yeah. Um, so they're okay, I think, is what I'm saying. Um, so let's give them a ranking. You can see there's probably some personal bias here, and there is. Um, but yeah, generally, the secondaries from the Chaos Space Marines book aren't fantastic. Um, no. Nope. This secondary is only good in maybe... 30 to 50 percent of games depending on what's popular at the moment yeah um so yeah and the reason why i've gone a little bit lower yes you've got the speed to get in certain places but all, you know when you're there mm. you don't want to be r and Ding. you need to be using those units to actually hit your opponent yeah um so i think for me it's kind of a little bit lower on that spectrum yeah. and they don't have a huge amount of obsec no. uh, i know you can take it away but that's not always as good as being Absolutely. as having it because you're, you're less in control there yeah so anyway, that's why i've given a slightly lower score on that one so let's move on to the next legion yeah and the next one is iron warriors all right then michael so talk us through what the iron warriors do for their legion trait okay so they ignore light cover yep fantastic um in fact they all ignore all cover you just don't receive the benefit of cover so they'll ignore dense as well that's good uh excellent and you cannot reroll wounds against them. Now that is different to the Codex because it has been FAQ'd, obviously because they get Armour of Contempt yes. now, but you can't reroll wounds against them. That is really strong. Very, very strong. And we'll see that combines with a couple of things later as well. Yeah. So as a trait, what are we thinking, Steve? I do like it. I do like it a lot. Give it a three. You've given it a four. Maybe I'm being too nice. Yeah, I think you are. Maybe I'm being too nice. Um, you can't reroll wounds against them. Yeah. That's pretty big. Um, but I don't think mm. the my when I look at the armies that yeah. can actually reroll wounds, yeah. aside from like a lieutenant rerolling a one, mm. there's very few armies that get full rerolls to wound. So I think it's gonna be situationally good. Yeah. Okay. I, I completely understand that as well. Um, I think also ignoring benefits of cover, very strong yeah. for, for shooting in the world of armor of contempt. Um, as well, yeah. So it's certainly yeah. better than your average. Yes, so I've given it a three. Yeah, but maybe um, you know not quite as good as mm -hmm. you know getting into those fours and stuff. Really. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, next is stratagems. Stratagems. Yeah. Talk us through those. So these stratagems, uh, there are some very resilient stratagems in here. Mm -hmm. um, minus one to wound potentially on um, core infantry or demon kin. There's also. Um, Minus one damage. Sorry, the minus one to wound is demon engines. Okay. And machine spirit, so like a land raider. Mm -hmm. um, and the minus one damage is on your core infantry or demon kin. Yeah. Uh, and they're probably the strongest ones looking at this. But you can get a five up save against mortal wounds or fill in a pain against mortal wounds. You can buff your damage against vehicles. Um, one of them, sadly, is only against Imperial Fists. Um, so it always hurts to see a stratagem like that yeah. uh, in the book. Um, so yeah, some resilience buffs in there, basically. Okay, cool. So let's give it the mark. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Yeah, I mean... Middle of the road. Minus one damage is insane. Yeah. But other than that, um, there's nothing hugely special here. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a few expensive ones as well. Yeah, I do like the sixes, uh, sixes to hit auto wound vehicles. I do really like that. I think anything mm -hmm. to help out killing those tougher targets. Yep. Uh, is quite nice. Yeah. And especially if you're in a wanton way, you can get those exploding sixes oh, as yeah. well. Um, I, th I think that's good, especially if you can start coupling that with manipulation of dice being mm -hmm. slanesh, other elements, I think would be quite good. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, next we'll look at the Wall of Traits and Relics. 
Well, to sum up the Iron Warriors Warlord traits and relics, their Warlord traits are mostly around buffing like vehicles and things. Yeah. Um, and like heavy weaponry. Which is rare. You don't normally get to buff up vehicles. That's yeah. kind of unique and cool, which is thematic to the army, which is nice. Agreed. Yeah. And then probably the rest of them are looking at uh, an individual's resilience. Yeah. Um, or maybe uh, relic weapons. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to give it. Well. Two. Fair enough. Um, it's it is a bit uninspiring, isn't it? Some of these. I do um, like the give a unit obsec because mm -hmm. then you can give it unit an obsec unit and it can go and do something. Yeah. Uh, which is cool. You can send it off and leave the character behind, which mm -hmm. is nice. See that being played with things yep. like the Dogmata and Sisters works very very well. I do yep. like you can give plus one to hit for those, um, you know, vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, yeah, demon engines and. Cult Destruction to get those obliterators a little bit yes. more out of them. Yeah. And being able to put a unit in Destruction. But they're all Warlord traits. The Relics for me are a little bit lacking. Yeah. So there's ones I would consider, but I think some of the Warlord traits and Relics from the actual main book are still stronger. Yes. And that's why I'm giving it a two. Yeah, completely understandable. Um, and I think they're sort of just about average. Yeah. Um, and yeah, as you say, some of the Warlord traits are quite good. Quite good. Yeah. Okay, right. Well, how do they play the mission? Well, if we look at their secondary, it's a little strange. Masters of Demolition. Now, this is a shadow operation, so remember, this is competing with something like Banners yes. or Retrieve Nephilim Data, which always, you know, shadow operations is not one that we struggle to score. No. Okay, um, this one is you set up three objective markers um, on the battlefield that aren't actual objective markers, and then you do an action on them and you get points each time you do the action, and it's kind of like demolishing a particular thing. Um, it's a bit complicated, yeah. Um, and you're probably going to pick one of the other two instead. Okay. So let's have a look at their mission play. Three, two, one. Yeah. It. It's nothing special. No. It's just basically normal marines in terms of normal chaos marines in terms of mission play, isn't it? Um, but slower. But the army wants to sit back. It wants to be yeah. slower. It doesn't have the you know, reach of some other armies necessarily. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm giving it a two. Yeah, and I, I can completely understand and agree with that. So Michael, next up we've got the Alpha Legion. Talk us through their Legion trait. Right, Alpha Legion. So um, if you target them with a ranged attack and you're more than 12 inches away, yep. then you minus one to your attack's hit roll. Okay. And now if the unit you're shooting at has a wounds, how contains any models, with a wounds characteristic of 10 or more, right. then you have to be 18 or more away to be right. minus one to hit. Okay, now this is interesting, it's not dense cover, it's just minus one to hit, so you potentially could stack with that. Um, and then their other one, their other ability, is they can perform an action or declare a charge in a turn in which they fell back. Okay, fallback and charge is always good. Yeah, fallback and action actually is quite significant. Uh, yeah, certain in some situations, cases, cases yeah. yeah, and minus one to hit, so okay, sort of over twelve. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's rate this one then, shall we? Am I being too generous, or is Steve being quite mean? I might be quite mean. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think the fallback in action is. I'm biased because I'm not going to shoot you anyway, because mm -hmm. I only play combat armies. Yeah. So you can have your minus one to hit if you want, uh, but and. The thing is that a lot of the Chaos Space Marine units are geared towards combat. Yeah. So I totally see that point of view. You're quite rarely going to be out of 12 or 18. Yeah. And it contradicts the fact that you can fall back and do these things. Yeah. Because if you're falling back, you're already within that range. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a bit of a, there's a disconnect. A little bit, yeah. the traits. Um, so, yeah. But on the whole, if you like a shooting army, mm -hmm. maybe it's for you. So yeah. Uh, yeah, each to their own. You give it a little bit higher, yeah. and I think it's be if you're playing against Tau, brilliant. Yeah. If you're playing against those sort of bigger gun lines that want to stay back and shoot you, it's going to be a fantastic trait. Agreed. But yeah. Obviously, I've got my perception of bias, and that's why I've given it a little bit lower score. Yeah. Okay, so um, stratagems up next, Michael. What are they like? Talk me through. Give me the synopsis. Okay, so these stratagems they're very tactical. Yes. All right. Um, now I've got personal favourite in here, um, but we'll reach that in a second. There is a um, putting things into strategic reserves yep. um, that can arrive closer than nine, so just out of six, yep. which is quite cool, arriving just out of six inches. That's really good, yeah. Um, we've got, uh, you can't shoot uh, one of my units if I'm the Alpha Legion player if you're more than 12 inches away. 
Um, and if you're within the 12, they also have to be the closest legible. Okay. Very good. Similar to uh, another stratagem in their book. Yep. This applies to any Alpha Legion infantry. The one in the book applies to Nurgle only. Um, we've got plus one to hit if you arrive from uh, reserves. Mm -hmm. You can hide is, your secondaries. You can hide your secondaries, which is fantastic if you had good secondaries. Um, and then there's or or explode an enemy vehicle yeah. or, or something. So that is extremely strong. Extremely strong. I know Steve absolutely hates that kind of thing, um, but uh, you gotta yeah you gotta be very wary of that. But you've also got a pre-game move, mm -hmm. and you've also got hey you can't set up on the battlefield this round. So okay. I think there's yeah let's give these a let's give these a rating. Yeah. Three, two, one. Ooh, five. Big five. All right, Steve. Big five. Tell me why. Well, as you know, I hate exploding vehicles, so if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> Giving it a five. Um, I just think all of these secondaries I would use. I'd be pre-game moving. I'd probably be fallback and shooting. Yep. I'd be basically saying you can't set up um, reinforcements in certain turns. Mm -hmm. I think all of these are definitely be hiding some of my secondaries potentially as well. I think all of these... Are brilliant and it's actually what interests me the most about playing alpha legion is the secondaries uh, the strats but yes yeah 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 Same i track. completely agree um these stratagems are really cool however um i've given it a four because there's not really a way in here to boost any kind of damage yeah. um it's all tactical okay um but yes so wall of traits and relics then right wall of traits um so we have a redeploy quite nice we've got give out obsec and you can action and shoot very good. Also very good. Uh, we've got some cultist buffs in here, and we've got some resilience buffs as well, uh, and then a sniper warlord trait uh, for the sake of it. Our relics, yep. predominantly focused on either being a uh, shooting or combat weapon, or being some kind of resilience thing. Yep. Um, they're okay. Uh, we've got some really cool ones here. Um, so a once per turn relic, once per battle relic, rather, where your opponent's specific, a specific stratagem they use costs an extra CP each time they use it. That's great for um, a relic. And then we've got one that benefits cultists um, and some special bullets. Okay, let's give that a rating. Three, two, one. In agreement? In agreement. Um, yeah. They're cool. Yeah. I think the reason why I've given it a three is yeah. they're all kind of good. And I think yeah. it's going to take a bit of a while to find out your, your sweet yes. spot with them. Yeah. Um, I personally could see myself making like an unkillable uh, guy where he can't be hit, can't be wounded, yeah. all that kind of shenanigans. So, um, yeah, I, th I think that's kind of why. Yeah, relics I find quite lacking. Um, and there's like a couple of warlord traits that I'd probably definitely play around take. with. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So finally then, their mission play. What do we think? Well, there's been um, some interesting talks about their secondary because it can potentially stop their opponent from holding an objective ever if right. it goes off. It's very interesting, um, but they do have to do an action very close to the enemy deployment zone, within six of the opponent's deployment zone. Yeah. Um, that is obviously quite difficult to do during a game, even with pre-game moves or redeployments. That's the secondary, and of course it's shadow operations, so you're competing with banners, etc. We've said this already. Yeah. Okay. Um, otherwise, it's just what they've got in, okay. in the book. So let's talk numbers. Yep. Three. Again, they've got that obsec ability, right? Yep. And what I really like about this is that because you've got the ability to fall back in action, they've got mm -hmm. a little bit more of interplay there. Yep. Um, the army is a little bit more, you know, I would say a little bit more shooting. Yes. So that's quite nice where you can still action and shoot and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. be in different places, still get some you know, good value out of your units. Yeah. So I think it's okay, but not you know, absolutely amazing. Agreed. I, yeah. still, I still think you're relying on some psychic secondaries as well that can be denied quite easily in some matchups. Yes, definitely. Right, Michael. <laughs> oh, it's time for perfection. It is time for perfection. We are looking at, of course, the Emperor's Children, Steve's favorite. Mm. Talk me through their traits. Right, their trait. They ignore all ballistic skill and hit roll modifiers. Okay. Pretty good. I mean, you actually think that's oh, not too bad. It doesn't sound amazing. Yeah. Pretty good, I think. Yeah. And then finally, their next trait is every time they roll a six, mm -hmm. they get an additional AP on that attack. So it's a six to wound. Six to wound, extra AP. Extra AP. And that's for shooting or melee. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. Well, let's um, look at what we're going to give that as a score. I'm ready. Three, two, one. Cool. Um, so from my point of view, the ignore hit rolls and bullet skill is amazing when you start seeing some stacks. It's when it starts to stack with the weapons this mm. army wants to use. Mm. Generally, when you look at this, it's not great. When you look at it like from the custodies point of view that have it, it's not overwhelmingly great. Yeah. But they don't suffer minus one to hit, whereas this army does when you're taking lots of power fists, yes. heavy chain axes. Yeah. You want to use combi weapons that want to shoot both profiles. Yeah. That's where it starts to really stack yeah. nicely. Assault weapons advancing and shooting yeah. as much as you want. Exactly. Um, that's yeah. where it starts to come in into its real core strength. And the additional AP is quite nice with Armour of Contempt. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Cool. cool. All right. Well, let's then look at stratagems. Okay. Talk me through their strats. Right, so I can increase the AP of my attacks in combat. Fantastic. That's always quite nice. I can put a unit into the slaughter, wanton. Yeah, exploding Again, sixes in melee. That's great. But here's the best ones. I can either hero clean to bean. Cool. Or hero clean to bean to six inches. Fantastic. I can fight on death. Disgusting. I can also make you fight last. Even more disgusting. And finally, with my sonic weapons, I can do mortal wounds and turn off overwatch. Okay. So These sound pretty good. They're all right. Ready, Michael? Oh, well, I'm ready. This was easy. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Smash that golden button if I had one. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, if you haven't already, we've got a couple of battle reports. Check them out. With Emperor's Children in them. Check them out. And we've also got on our members area my overview of my Emperor's Children army and how I run it. Yeah. But there's one stratagem I didn't mention, and it's mm -hmm. probably my standout. When I charge, yeah. I just roll one dice, mm -hmm. and I add a six to it. When I, when I advance, I auto-advance six. Really useful, use it every turn. Yeah. And that stacks really well with the rest of the army. Obviously, I have to be Slanesh. Everything's mm -hmm. Slanesh in this army. So there we have it. And you don't like rolling dice. I hate so it. So perfect for you. Yeah. All right. Let's look then at some Warlord traits and relics. So, Steve, Warlord traits and relics, what are we doing here with the Emperor's Children? Okay, so the big standouts for me, um, I've got the ability to make you minus one to hit. I've got the ability to make you minus one attack characteristic okay. as well. Um, so I think there's some really nice interplay there with being kind of anti-combat, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And then I think for the relics, we've got some really nice ones in here as well, where, for example, I can stop you from falling back. I can do mortal wounds to you. Um, and you know, I can sort of prevent sort of actions and that kind of stuff as well. Okay, cool. So yeah. Let's get some scores. Two. I mean, I can see why the two. It does sort of pale in comparison to what we've just talked about with the stratagems. Talk me through why you've given it such a low score, Steve. Because there's only one I would take. Mm. There's only one warlord trait I would take, and mm. that is Lucius's warlord trait, and I'll yeah. give it to Lucius. That's the only one I would take out of this book. Because actually the army performs much better with the additional book set, um, like relics and warlord traits, yeah. if we include them mm. in terms of the overall power of the army, which yeah. maybe we should, or a factor that we haven't really, we're not necessarily talking about in yeah. this isolated manner, I would probably proc it up to maybe a four because how the army starts to work together. But for me, just through them alone, it's a two. Yeah, definitely, I can 100% I can see that. Um, there's nothing that really stands out. Yep. Um, so yeah, all right. Well. Time for some mission play. Okay. So, Adorn the Canvas Electic. Basically, what I've got to be able to do at the end of the battle round, so it's mm -hmm. great if you go second, yeah. um, I've got to be able to hold more objectives than you. Okay. I've got to have killed more with ranged attack than you, okay. kill more uh, with melee attacks than you killed mm -hmm. of me, and kill more of your characters with my characters than you killed of my characters and some sort of character killing sort of combo. Um, I get a point for each one of those. I right. satisfy if I do all of them, I get an additional point. Okay, interesting. And which slot is this in? This is in No Mercy, No Respite. Right, okay, cool, okay. Right, well, let's give this a score. Three, two, one, go. I'm very, I'm, I feel like I'm being too positive here, but maybe it's after 10,000 years of waiting for a book yeah. um, that I'm overwhelmingly positive. Um, okay, so from my point of view, I really like the secondary. I do understand. I'm actually going to change to a four. You can change to a four. I'm changing to a four. Fair enough. Uh, we'll for one explain reason. That. Yeah. For one reason. Yeah. 
because I've got heroic intervention. Mm -hmm. So it just means my ability to hold objectives yes. and also keep my banners up is a mm -hmm. little bit stronger. So that's why yeah. I'm giving it that. Yeah, fair enough. So, yeah. Um, and combined with like things like the fight last, yeah. it really, really helps you manipulate your enemy's turn to yeah. try and get these if you're going first. Um, I've had to really build my army list very hard to order mm -hmm. to, in order to score my secondaries. Yeah. Uh, and one of the other ones I go for is where my characters have to basically kill monsters and vehicles for me. Yes. So I'm yeah. using that as a way of stacking this stuff together. But I've had to work hard to do it. Absolutely. I've had to really orchestrate the list much harder than I would if I've created another list in the mm. game. Because you've got to be good at shooting things Killing and stuff. combat. Yeah. Um, you can't just skew into one like most lists do. Absolutely. So next up we've got the Red Corsairs. Michael, talk us through it. Right, well, not technically a Legion. Um, these guys have been around a while and they get... Advance and charge, just, just across the whole board. And they count as two models when determining control of an objective marker. But if they have a wounds characteristic of 10 or more, they count as five models when determining control of an objective marker. Let's give these guys a ranking. Oh, it's a difficult decision. Um, so I'll go first. You explain why you're not certain. Um, he's doing a four just to be different. I get it. Um, so <laughs> advance and charge is fantastic. Uh, obviously, massive reach, but I do get that that's only really coming into effect maybe in the first sort of three, four turns of the game. Um, the objective thing is what does it for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. having counting as two models on an objective is insane. Um, and then, of course, if you do take something like a rhino. A rhino counts as five models on an objective. It's pretty good, yeah. That's great. So yeah. if you get a rhino and some legionaries, yeah. nobody's taking those objectives off you. No. Um, so I really like that. What made the decision hard for you? I think, um, because I think there's other ways to get advanced in charge. Yeah. Um, like the, for example, the priest ability. Mm -hmm. You can get it. You don't always need it either. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if we compare that just to the Emperor's children that get that auto kind of six yep. on the charge, that yep. might even be stronger. But yeah. for me, and that's why I'm giving it a four. But I do yeah. think it's great. Yeah. I, I do think it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Right. Well, stratagems. Now, there's only four okay. for the Red Corsairs. So we've got to bear that in mind. Compared to all of the other legions, of course, they've only got half as many stratagems. So we're probably, we can't really give it a five, can we? Because it's not eight stratagems. But if they're four or better than I think all it's eight of the other guys, it, yeah. I guess it's a possibility. So um, qual quality is better than quantity. Very true. Yeah. So stratagems, we have plus one to your save uh, for a core unit against damage one. Yep. It's quite nice. Um, we have a really good stratagem here where a biker unit that has fought can now uh, make a normal move. So instead of consolidating, what basically happens is you charge in, mm -hmm. I hit you, yeah. and before you get to attack me, I can just get out of there. Yeah, so you can make a fallback move if you're still in engagement range. Yep. Or if you're not in engagement range, you can just make a normal move. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty insane. And then another fantastic stratagem, 2CP, you can prevent one of your enemy units actually turning up on the battlefield. Yeah. So if they've got something in reserve, you literally just say, no. Nope. No. Yeah. That it's not is happening. nuts. Uh, and you can only yeah. use it once per game, otherwise it'd be busted. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is uh, basically an orbital bombardment kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so let's give these a um, so ranking. Three, two, one. Okay, well, there are only four of them. Yeah. And I'd argue only three of them really come into effect because all yeah. bombardment's a bit meh. Yeah. Um, Plus one damage is situational. I'd be using the hounds of her on every single turn to mm -hmm. fight and fall back, fight and fall back, mm -hmm. fight and fall back. Um, and the, the coming in from reinforcements is situational. Yeah, I but, think you probably, well, you can only use it once anyway. Yeah. Right? Um, but yeah. I think it's okay. Yeah. On the whole, well done, Red Corsairs. You did a good job. Wall of Trace and Relics up next. So, Michael, Wall of Trace and Relics, what are we thinking here? Um, so, we've got uh, getting CP back. There's only six, three remember? Normal. So, three yeah. and three. So, there's a little bit less than normal. Yeah. So, you've got, yeah, you mentioned getting some CPs. Getting CP, buffing your wards, attacks, and strengths. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, a sort of fire and fade ability. So um, you can get a biker unit, sorry, a core unit to move um, after it's shot. Yep. Now bear in mind, that does mean it has to shoot yep. before it gets to do that move. 
Oh, but that's still fantastic. It's still a normal move, but it cannot charge. Yeah. Um, really like that ability. Relics, we've got a special melter gun. Yeah. Um, and then we have a Terminator armor, which gives an aura ability of an invun. Yeah. Quite nice. Um, and then sort of an epic DE plus one attack kind of ability as well. Okay. So let's give this a number. So we're giving it, Michael, three, two, one, four. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah, because I'm going to be taking the command point reroll. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably, I'm definitely taking, or hundred percent taking the uh, fire and fade, because my three units of bikes, one unit's going to go forward mm -hmm. and fire and fade out of combat, and one's going to fire and fade after shooting. Then I'm going to send that unit into combat that's going to fire and fade. And then my third unit of bikes is going to fire and fade after shooting. So that's what's happening. It's epic. And uh, then I'm going to definitely have a four plus invulnerable save on my Terminators. And I might even take the Epic D for free on a Priest with the Black Mace, extra attack, auto do my Litany, Bish Bash yeah. Bosh, he's a weapon. Yeah, and I uh, should say that Huron obviously is a red Corsair. You're probably taking him because he gives you full rerolls to hit. Yeah. Uh, his Warlord trait is the CP regen. Nice. So that ties in really well with him as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, very good stuff. Let's talk about the mission. Okay, the mission. So, Michael, how do you think this army plays the mission? Well, let's talk about their secondary real quick. Yeah. Um, so, it's doing an action on different objective markers you haven't already done the action on, uh, and you can get extra points for being alive at the end of the game or being close to your deployment zone. Okay. Um, interesting. It's a shadow operation again. We've had this discussion. You might want to take banners instead, etc. But it's a very fun secondary, uh, and if you've got bikes around, it's quite cool. Mm -hmm. Now, for the mission, seeing as we're kind of building into bikes... Yeah. Um, we do have speed on our side, um, so potentially that unlocks a few more tricks when it comes to secondaries uh, and playing the mission. So let's give so it a score, Michael. Let's give it a score. Three, two, one, go. Oh, he's gone for a five. Yeah, five. He's gone for a five. Okay, well, talk me through your wire five and probably your top secondary picks you'd take with this army. Okay, so I really like the fact that I count as double the amount of models. Yes. So it's great at swinging objectives in that respect. I totally forgot that, sorry. Well, that's why, I, you know. I definitely I'm here, wouldn't Michael. rank it on a three. If, Do you want to give it a four? I'd, I'll, I'll definitely, I'd give it a four. Bump up I'd to give a it four. a four. I think that that really swings the primary. So I was thinking of three because they don't, while they're fast, they don't initially have any like obsec tricks. Yep. Um, but actually the number of models thing is insanely powerful. Yeah. So I'll bump that up to a four. Also, I like the advance in charge, just to advance in charge with cultists. Mm -hmm. Those types of things, just to get the objective secured yep. on it, while you, your powerhouse hitting you yep. clears the objective as well, yep. like that. Um, the two CPs, like I said, the firing, get out of combat, mm -hmm. that's gonna get me behind enemy lines every single time. I think you're turn. always taking behind enemy lines with this army. Yeah, I'm also gonna take banners as defense, I'm gonna do yep. a lot of pressure, sit back, put up the banners, Bit of some psychic shenanigans, maybe yep. a mental interrogation, yep. sprinkle that in and... Whoosh. Potentially the long war to take objectives off your opponent because you're fast, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, that works really well. Yeah, I like these. I like these red corsairs. I like it. Very cool. So, creations of Bile. Oh, look at him. Isn't he beautiful? Fabius Bile, look. Painted by, of course, Siege Studios. Yeah, um, yeah, he's, he's 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 lovely. And just a quick one on this: this model is absolutely stunning. That siege have done for us comes with his little friend. Um, but yeah, this is one of the most beautiful models um, I've seen in such a like. I was looking at this model, extremely intimidating to paint it, yeah. and I thought siege are going to do a much better job than me. Like yeah. the skin cloak, honestly, I couldn't be happier. I love the fact they've done it in like a black armor, so we can kind of put him in any mm. any army. Mm. Obviously, originally he's a you know an Empress Children model, an uh, Empress Children Legionary yeah. back in the day. Uh, but what a stunning, stunning piece. And I think his uh, rules are great as well. So yeah. that's a little bit of a side note. But C Studios, thank you so, so much. Um, yeah, your work is awesome. Yeah. And of course, you can take Fabius Baal in the creations of Baal as well. And he's got a specific wall of trait we'll talk about as well later. Yeah. Um, now, the Legion trait for these guys, it's called Experimental Enhancements. And what does it do, Steve? Okay. So basically, we get plus one move and plus one strength mm -hmm. to our characteristics. Um, then I can fight on death with all units, fight on death as if I had one wound remaining. So maybe not good on something that can basically be bracketed, yeah. but something that's an infantry model is going to be brilliant. Um, cool. So I think that's very strong. All right, well, let's, let's put a number to it, shall we? I mean, I can see why, you know, I can see why fight on death is incredibly strong. Um, not gonna lie, I wouldn't be surprised 
if maybe one day it changes. <laughs> like well, the Harlequins we did, did see it with Harlequins. Yeah. Um, now, the reason why it is so strong um, is because, again, I'm a combat player. Mm -hmm. I cannot play into this army. No. It will destroy my Blood Angels, yeah. you know, 99 times out of 100. Um, it's a super hard matchup. Yeah. And um, if but against Tau, mm -hmm. they don't literally care. That's why I've given it a four, basically, is just because yeah. it's only melee. So if you've got any way of doing like psychic mortal wounds or mortal wounds on the charge, even, yeah. they don't get any bonus against it. Yeah. Um, but as you say, Fight on Death is fantastic, and that plus one to move should never be underestimated. Right. And the plus one strength really pushes some of those units to a from sweet four spot. Four to five, which is a big sweet spot. Yeah. Um, or yeah. even to eight to nine. Yeah. So I think that's great. So um, again, I think the fact that. Creations of Baal having this is actually stronger than Dark Harlequins. Yes. Um, because of the ways that the rules interact and the, the unit profiles. You're but, possessed yeah. with a three up save, three wounds, yeah. five attacks. Yeah. Um, that are damage two. Yeah. My, you know, uh, compared to one Harlequin is. Big difference. Big difference. Yeah. Okay, so that is those. So next up, we've got stratagems. They have four, just like the Red Corsairs. Mm -hmm. um, we've got one, that means you can basically be minus one to hit. Yeah, melee, yeah, in the fight phase. We've got another one that allows me to advance in charge for a CP. Cool. Um, and then the other one, which I really like, is basically as long as I can see you mm -hmm. um, in the command phase or see my own unit, I can basically give it my aura abilities. Yeah. So I think that's really nice as yeah, well. that's quite cool. I like that. Uh, and then there's another one based upon killing the enemy warlord in melee. Yeah, uh, it's deep too situational. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so let's put a number to it. Three, two, one. Ooh, you've gone very low, Michael. I've gone a bit low. Honestly, I only really see using two of these stratagems. Um, and the minus one to hit in melee is kind of like, well, you fight on death. So maybe you don't need to be minus one to hit in melee. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you want to die. Um, and maybe you want to spend your CP on other stratagems. Potentially. Yeah. Um, advance and charge is great. But fighting in death is only okay because you still want to be alive to actually do something next turn. Yes, this is very true. Um, advance the charge you can get elsewhere. It's nice to have it automatically happen yeah. um, for a CP. Um, but I just think you probably advance the charge, best stratagem, and then you're probably looking at main rule book stratagems yeah. um, for the rest of it. I agree. Um, yeah. Okay. So next up, we've got Warlord Traits and Relics. There's three of each. Mm -hmm. So we go through the Warlord Traits. The first one is basically every hit roll of a four automatically wounds and additional AP. What? The, this is the one that uh, Fabius has to take yep. with his stick. With his cane. With yep. his stick, which is damage three. It's crazy good. Yep. Uh, you've got plus one strength and toughness in wounds, mm -hmm. um, and then basically stand back up, like Celestine on a two up, with the okay. three wounds remaining. Very nice. I should add that you can't do this and fight on death. Yeah. But it's still very good. Well, you haven't, you haven't died technically, have you? So. No, exactly, yeah. Um, then we've also got for relics, get CPs back on fives. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once per game, change the damage to one. That's pretty cool as well. Yeah. Um, and then there's a sort of special bolt weapon. Yeah. So, I don't think they're too bad, you know. Mm. So what we're going to give it, Michael? Three, well. two, one. Yeah? Yeah, I'm in agreement. I think um, standing back up, fantastic. The four up to hit Warlord trait. You're giving that to Bile. Yeah, or you can take the Ignore Invun yeah. Sword, Zinch, because then you auto wound on a four to hit, and you get that extra AP, good. which if they don't have an Invun, it's going to be insanely powerful. That's quite nice. That's good to stack that, yeah. Yeah, and then... Getting CPs back. CPs back, yeah. Um, changing the damage to one. You could, you, could change, you could put that with a bit of Zinch, maybe, as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. That could be quite yep, cool. So you ignore the first one, and then the next one you change the damage one. Yeah. I like that. That's cheeky. Yeah. Uh, maybe on the same guy. Who knows? <laughs> oh. um, okay. And then, yeah. so I think, on the whole, pretty decent yeah, showing pretty decent, for, yeah. for the Wall of Tricks and Relics. So next up, the mission play. So mission play here, um, they're secondary. You score three points if one or more characters or monsters were destroyed. Um, cool. Wow. At the end of the battle round, this is as well. Um, yep. And score two if one or more units, excluding characters and monsters, were destroyed by a melee attack. So if you kill one unit in melee in the battle round, you get two points. Yes. And at the end, what? Of, the, and at the, end of the battle, if one or more Astarte, Santic, or whatever were destroyed by a melee yep. attack... Um, if any marines, basically, were you killed... You just get an additional bonus point. You get an additional bonus point. Yeah. Um, 
This is in Purge the Enemy, which traditionally is is one of the more based on your opponent picks. Yeah. Two points for killing a unit in combat with your combat orientated mm. army, right? Or three for killing it. Let's just put a number on it, shall we? Three, two, one. I look. They may not have any obsec tricks. Okay. Don't need it. But when you fight on death. And you just get points for killing thing. Literally, you kill one unit, you get two VP. So I'm coming over to take down your banner. Yeah. I got to kill your unit, but oh wait, I do it, but then you kill me. Now I have, yeah. because I haven't taken it off you in a command phase because you killed me on death, it's still your banner. So yeah. you're definitely taking banners. You're definitely taking this purge the enemy and some sort of psychic secondary, and you're probably good to go. Uh, pfft, it's jobs insane. are good, and you know, um, yeah, purge the enemy. So you combine this with like long war maybe and yeah. banners. Or you could take a second psychic one. Mm -hmm. uh, this is nuts. Uh, maybe your psyker stands back up when they die. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, yeah. This anyway. Amazing. I want to know the results because I so literally do I. don't know who is one. So we're going to come back to you with the results and the scores on the doors. So I've got the results in the hand, Michael. I'm not showing you what they are. But I want to know. I know. I want to know as well. And I'm, I hope <laughs> you do as well at home. So quickly, before we move on, comment below with who you think is in first place. So put first equals such and such, and then put eighth equals such and such. Yeah. You've got five seconds to do that now. Anyway, while you're doing that, um, one thing we need to talk about is that we haven't taken into consideration the armies play with the rest of the units in the book. That's right. The rest of the warlord traits, stratagems, and everything else that you can get from the core book. We also haven't considered the, maybe the meta at the moment or anything and how they play into that. This is purely based on their rules, yeah. their two pages or four pages in the book. Because I think some of these might even change. Maybe we can discuss mm -hmm. that towards the end of this. So now, anyway, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Comment below. Are you ready, Michael, to oh, know? I'm so ready. We'll go with eighth place. I'm just going to pull right. this back. OK, so in eighth place, we have the Iron Warriors. OK. With a score of 22 out of, obviously, um, 40. 40 points, yeah. yeah, 22 out of 40, with an average of 2.8. OK, respectable. I can see why. Okay. Up in seventh place, we've got your favourite, the Night Lords. Also understandable. With a 24. Yeah. And a 3.0. Just, just a three. Just That's what three they get average. as a three. Yeah. I actually really love this way of doing a tier list, by the oh, way. I do too. It's so different. Let us know in the comments if you have enjoyed this a little bit different to maybe what other tier lists are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've liked this unique spin on things. So in sixth place, we've got the Alpha Legion. Okay. Okay. With 26, so just a little bit higher yeah. than obviously the Night Lords, yeah. with a 3.3 average score. Cool. And I think that's going to be one that we might see on the channel soon. I think mm -hmm. we're both tempted to give those Very a bit of a tempted. spin out. Yeah. Now, this is a little bit of a controversial one, I would say. Mm -hmm. Guess who's in fifth? Fifth. Oh, well, you said controversial, so I'm going to guess... Um... Empress Children. No, Black Legion. Black Legion. Black Legion in fifth with a 29, mm. 3.6 now. So the gap's mm. starting to increase between yeah. the bottom segment and this segment. Um, Remember, we haven't accounted for a Baden necessarily being no. in the list. He's obviously a big, huge force multiplier. Yeah, it really um, is. But we've, we've looked at the, the pages of the book. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, but nice, respectable score. Mm -hmm. Next up, I can't believe it. I wouldn't have had him here. The Empress Children at 31. Mm. I think what's let them down in this score particularly is basically me giving them a very low score for the Warlord Traits and Relics. I think it was fair though. Yeah, I do think so. The thing is the rest of the book makes up for that. It really does. But also when we start to look at the other wider aspects of mm -hmm. the book, I think that would start to raise yeah. them up a little bit. Again, we haven't accounted for the fact Lucius the Eternal was a choice for them. Exactly. Uh, he's mega. So they got a 31 with a 3.9. Okay. So in th third place mm -hmm. now this is a tie a flat tie okay so we're going to say that second place yeah okay um joint second so joint second now is the red corsairs mm -hmm. and creations of bile correct yeah with a 32 score with a 4.0 cool i love it and then finally our winners tonight um I mean, sh without a shadow of a doubt, I think they are a super strong faction. Yeah. Um, and they are a 35 with a 4.4, and that is the word 
bearers. You give re-rolls to an entire army as a trait. <laughs> Honestly. And don't forget those take that all day. feel no pains to mortal wounds. Yeah, I just, what a combo uh, yeah. for traits and then everything else as well is so good. Yeah. So for me, I would maybe shuffle that around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'd probably have, oh, I don't know. I think the red courses probably go a little bit further down. Yeah. I, I feel might, like their killing power is a little less. I might swap um, Emperor's Children hmm. with them in the third. Yeah. So I'd probably have it... Creations of Bile at one. Mm -hmm. Then at two, I'd probably have Word Bearers. Mm. And then maybe at three, I'd have Emperor's Children mm. if I was looking at the wider books. I think yeah. in some tournaments, Fabius, uh, the Creations of Bile yeah. in a more combat orientated meta is going to dominate it. Absolutely. Um, so I think that's kind of where they might pip the Word yeah. Bearers ever so slightly. And their secondary is just insane. too good. And it's in the perfect slot as well. Yeah, it's too yeah. good. So that's me. Anything you would move around or disagree with that statement? Um, it feels a shame that the Iron Warriors are so low down when they've got like that really tough side to them, but yeah. I kind of see it. Uh, I wasn't expecting Night Lords to be higher than number one, if I'm honest, but they do have fantastic Warlord traits. They do. Alpha Legion, great strats. Um, Black Legion, you'd expect them to be a bit higher. Yeah. I think, you know, if you do have a Badden in there, obviously it makes them a bit better. Um, but again, a lot of it is the secondary game. It really is, yeah. Um, and if you're a follower of the channel, you know that secondaries win games. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I can understand this ranking, yeah. If you've enjoyed the content, then make sure you do check out and like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments which army is your ranked number one. Um, and finally, um, if you want to see more videos just like this, then do consider being a member. We put out videos every single Friday, on average two every single week. So if you love this type of content, do subscribe and become a member. And uh, it really helps us here at VT. So yeah. thank you so, so much. We've really enjoyed this. Let us know if you have, and uh, I look forward to reading your comments below. And we'll see you on the next video.